is why a lot of these men can't stand their wives, because she is a reminder that he's the one who needs saving. They've been telling us all along that we're the ones who need a prince to save us. <laughs> Bull. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So I want to, I saw this amazing thread on Twitter. I will not call it X. And I love this so much. This just breaks it down so well because a lot of women are really confused. Why do men hate <laughs> their partners? Now they may not have started off hating them, but uh, that's where it ends up. And this, I believe, is why. So this was in response to this original tweet uh, about men um, marrying women they don't like. Well, Thread, I really enjoy following Heidi on Twitter. She covers politics and all kinds of stuff, but when she talks about relationships, I find it really interesting. I don't always agree, but it's, this is really insightful. Let's, let's just look at this. Some of this is stuff I've already talked about, but I just want to give you the whole content. I do think that more women need to be aware that a lot of men don't want them for who they are, that's what we've been saying, but for what they represent. I think this is a good point because I talk a lot about this and my mutuals talk about how men will marry women for what they do for them um, in terms of like utilitarian, right? Uh, we are a free schmegs worker. We are a th free therapist. We are, you know, we, we do all the domestic labor, uh, the mental load, emotional labor, blah, 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 right? Personal assistant, life coach, blah. And we are the, what connects them to the community because they're too lazy to make their own friends. Right? Other than like sports as if those are real friendships because those men are never going to show up for them. But, um, but they also use women for what we represent, not just what we do. So, and for a lot of men, what women represent is not someone to love, but an answer to the man's own discomfort and pain. And y'all know me and my mutuals talk about how men are, I say dead inside is like a funny way to put it, but it's because men hate themselves. That's why dating an insecure man and marrying an insecure man is one of the most dangerous things a woman can do. Because if that man is insecure, um, it, then he hates himself on some level. And the more they hate themselves and the more insecure they are, the more they are going to ruin you, destroy you, at the very least exploit you, but probably like humble you and make you hate yourself as much as they hate themselves um, and break you down so much and break down your self-esteem and cut you off from all the things that you love because these men are so exhausting that you'll never leave them because you now hate yourself as much as they hate themselves. So you're trapped. And you're trapped with someone who hates you, but you're doing all this free stuff for. <laughs> like, uh, it's kind of brilliant and it's so sad because everyone loses, but because they're men, they're going to get their, they still win, you know? So um, a relationship for them is not as emotional substance, but a crutch. The relate, a lot of men's relationships with women that they date and then marry is not about a relationship. It is a crutch in every possible way. Now look what she says here. The promise of a cessation to his problems. That's what we represent. That's why they are like... <laughs> That's why they are willing to pay so much money. Um, premium stuff on the dating app. That's why they spend so much money trying to get women. And now they're not even willing to spend money because the stupid intels have told them that they're entitled to all this without even spending money. But we know that we actually have the advantage here. They want us. I know they've convinced some of us that we need them and we want them, but they actually need us and want us. Um, why do you think women get into free into everything? Like, they're like, just please bring men here will literally pay us to sleep with them. They'll pay us just to be seen with them, right? They need us. We don't need them. They've, you know, tried to convince us that we do. We don't. Especially now that we have bought and won for our rights to have bank accounts and all these other things, although even that is subjective or conditional based on which intersection you're at. And obviously anything contracted under these expectations will never work, right? That's why this doesn't work. They marry women because of what we do for them, but also to make them feel like winners, to make them feel like, you know, idolized, but they're going to get pay raises. They're going to get more respect. They, you know, they've made it, right? Like we know that like there's the George Clooney is not the norm. George Clooney is only like the, El the bachelor that people look up to because he's rich and famous and has social capital. But most men who are bachelors um, after a certain age, they are not looked up to. They are pitied. And those men are even more desperate, especially if they don't have money. Well, look at this. 
It's not that men want to be rescued, although many, if not most, do, okay? So I know, like, th just hold, s stick with me here. They do want to be rescued. It's not really that they want to be, it's that they want a relationship to make themselves forget what they need to be rescued from. And that is often themselves. Boom! That is it right there. If these men actually wanted to be rescued, they want to be rescued. But they won't accept our help. They'll exploit us. So many women have such great advice for men. And we can build them up and we can literally multiply all of the things in their lives. But they won't listen to us. They resent the very help that they're getting, right? No, 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 no. We offer them a distraction from the very fact that they deep down know they need rescuing. And that the call is coming from inside the house. They are the danger. They are their own worst enemy because they hate themselves. And they don't want to look at that. They don't want to look at why they hate themselves. They don't want to look at maybe the fact that their dad hated them. And that they just, you know, didn't really deal with that. And that they, they blame their mom for their dad hating them. <laughs> and they made them wrong for their dad leaving them and all this other stuff. I'm not saying that there aren't terrible moms, totally terrible moms. Sometimes the moms are the ones who do all this stuff. But a lot of these men have major issues and they don't want to look at it. They just coast on patriarchy because they can keep surviving on that. They can avoid, 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 avoid by just dating one woman after another after another that make, can, can make them feel important, make them feel special, make them feel like they finally succeeded, make other men jealous. And by being successful on the outside, they never have to stop and look inside to the fact that they are their own worst enemy. So they can get all these things that they want. They can get, you know, get the social capital because they still want to like live the single life and do everything. This is what they like cheat anyway, right? They get the social capital and the respect and all of the things that come with being married and having kids and being a dad and having a legacy and all this crap they're obsessed with. But none of those things solve the real problem is that they hate themselves and they know they don't deserve that stuff. So what do they do? They drink, they smoke, they play games, they gamble, they become obsessed with marathons, whatever it is that they can do to avoid sitting with themselves and really going inward. These men are terrified of themselves and they will literally do any form of escapism to face that really ugly truth. I wanna blow this thing so bad but I don't want to wake him up. It's like almost two in the morning here while I'm recording it. Then she goes on to say, anyway, way too many women overlook the fact that men in their lives treat them like adversaries, right? Because they're jealous of us. They're jealous of us and because of this, they hate the fact that they need be rescuing. And those men do not like women in their life, the women in their lives, because how can you fundamentally like a crutch? They need us. They need us to not feel alone. They need us for all the things we do for them. They need us as an, a, a distraction. They need us for all the success that makes them feel like they've made it and they've won. No matter how much they hate themselves and really deep down feel like a loser. But our mere presence in their home is like, hey, you're a loser. You need me. Like they hate, they, they hate the crutch. They hate the fact that they need us, so they resent us. And instead of actually doing the hard work, which would make them actually happy and being capable of loving, because in this state, they can't love us. They can't love anything. You can't love someone that you're exploiting. How can an emotional and household labor crutch do anything but be a constant reminder that you need a crutch at all? I want women to hold out for men that actually genuinely like them and want them around, not a distraction, nor a servant, nor a crutch, an equal and a partner. And that's why I'm like, no, I'm, I'm not a wife. I don't want to be a wife. I think it's hilarious. Sometimes I'm like, I say like, who's been a wife? Because I honestly never thought I'd get married. I had no desire to. I'd never seen it benefit any women in my life up until like maybe 10 years ago. And I was like, oh. I guess it doesn't totally suck if he sees you as a human and adores you and is your partner. Okay, I could see why someone that might do that. That's why I tell y'all all the time when you're, um, you know, if you're going on dates with guys, the first thing, the very first thing and the most important thing that I look for in everything they do is entitlement. And whether they're thoughtful, whether they see, do they see me or do they see me as like, am I replaceable? Do they like me? Because all these men that are like, first message is you're beautiful, fork off. 
No, I'm not. I'm not saying I'm not. Just like, that is literally like, you read my profile, you would know that that's the, 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 the only compliment I don't want. And it's lazy. Like in my Tinder profile, I had, I was like, climb, raft guy, film industry, or bound instructor, writer, storyteller, comedian, Obama follows me. The men who actually wrote my profile were like, wow. Most men are like, hey, you're beautiful. What's your favorite superhero? Seriously, the lazy first message on a dating app screams entitlement. If a man had the audacity to look at all these photos of me climbing, rafting, um, doing all this cool stuff. Then I also mentioned, yeah, I was a strawberry picker in Argentina. I taught English in Chile. I uh, taught English in Spain. Like, I had... The men who read my profiles were like, this is the most amazing profile I've ever seen. And I was like, mm, yeah, because I'm a writer. I'm a storyteller. Your profiles are a story. Of course, I'm going to be good at that. And I know how to make good jokes. I've been doing this stuff for 20 years, right? So I, I, you know, I will own that. I am very proud of my profile. And so these men who would come in there and be like, oh, what's your favorite superhero? If you could have, a, if you had a superpower, what would it be? Those are the same men who give their height and say in heels. Every single man on that app had that dumb joke. They still do that. In LA, they all had that joke. And then they also said uh, they're all into like tacos and bourbon or whiskey, pizza. Like, I'm like, do you all just copy and paste this from other men's stuff? Like, how are you all so boring and unoriginal? And then for them to send a boring, unoriginal. <laughs> Look at his arm. A boring, unoriginal first message to me your oh your first shot out of the gate and you do this come on or hey <laughs> or dtf that was always my favorite if you are too lazy to write down to fork you're definitely too lazy to eat my kitty cat that's I, that 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 test never fail anyway so that honestly that was the when i started realizing entitlement um, is like the, the foundation of like grape culture and I'm looking for entitlement everywhere. First message, you can see it. Does it mean that first good me uh, one good message, the first message is good, that they're not entitled? It just means like you can weed out so many men by looking for the entitlements, which, show, which, which shows up as laziness in that very first message. That's like if you were out at a bar and a guy thought you were hot, that's like him wadding up a piece of paper and throwing it at you. It is so lazy and like disrespectful. I will never talk to someone who would be like that in person. Why would I do that online? Stop giving men the benefit of the doubt. Stop giving men the benefit of the doubt. <laughs> okay, I need to learn how to play this. Anthony's been trying to teach me and I'm like, nah, I'll learn later and this is, this is bad. Okay, here come, here's where some hope comes in y'all, okay? The answer to all this is not avoidance necessarily, i.e. avoiding all men. It is, discernment. Nobody is saying just never date men again. Nobody is uh, shaming women for going on dates. I know that that conversation has been going around. Nobody's doing that. I mean, maybe one or two people are doing that, but that's not what's happening. What women are trying to do, women like myself and my mutuals, is discourage women from normalizing abusive behavior um, and stop accepting being exploited, having high standards. If that means tapping out for a while and not dating until you have dated yourself and are really sure with yourself and really like your own company and you're not jumping from guy to guy, because, you know, again, women can do the same thing. We can jump and jump and jump and jump around to avoid ourselves. The problem is, is that when we do it, we get exploited and exhausted and sometimes die. When men do it, they just keep avoiding dealing with anything and just keep extracting resources and labor from women for free. So they benefit from jumping around, though they really don't because they'll never know love and they still hate themselves. And we do not. We die. That ruins our lives. So I really want women to stop jumping around from one relation to the next and just be alone if you don't know how to. Try it out. And then after you've really learned that you are the love of your life, you are the one you've been waiting for and you, and you know how to be in a room by yourself and love that person and have fun with that person, then maybe from that place you can date. Because from a place of desperation, you are really in danger of um, dying at the hands of these men. They can smell it. Discernment is a very important word in conducting relationships. Dis discernment is knowing what makes you feel safe and loved and respected and choosing for that and someone who is capable of that, right? That's important, a lot of these men are not instead of making excuses for men who don't treat you the way you want to and should be treated.
Back to that, stop giving bent men the benefit of the doubt. Stop dating them for their potential. This does not mean they have to be perfect when you meet them. Don't, don't get me wrong here. I am not perfect. I had a lot of red flags. Maybe not red, pink flags. My husband had some pink flags. And by that I mean, I was like, okay, I'm gonna keep an eye on this and this is something that we are gonna talk about right out of the gate and that we're both going to work on. And I've shared some, I've shared some of that stuff and I will, once I get my like Patreon going, cause I don't want all this stuff for the whole public to see, but nobody is perfect. You are literally going to grow and learn and hopefully, hopefully if it's a good relationship, grow and learn and become the better version of yourself in the right relationship. In the wrong relationship, you will become the worst version of yourself. You will become someone you don't even recognize. You will become someone who is like living in the opposite of all of your morals and all your whole uh, moral compass is totally shifted because you've made excuse after excuse after excuse of being with a man who is making your life worse and exploiting you and you fall into that victim narrative. You become bitter and resentful. You don't uh, pour into yourself. You don't spend time doing things you love. You don't spend as much time with your friends. That is like, that literally, um, a good relationship will bring out the best in you. You will be challenged and you will grow. And it's not always easy because growing isn't easy, but relationships and marriage are not supposed to be hard in terms of like putting up with a bunch of crap. But in the wrong relationship, you will age. Your body will age forward in all the wrong ways and your, your maturity and all of the things that are, you will go backwards. And in a healthy relationship, you will glow up. You will glow up. You will like just, you, you, you it, the glow up is real, y'all. And you will also grow and be start becoming the best version of yourself. Although those are challenging moments and sometimes you are gonna slip slide backwards to go forward. Okay, this is really complicated, but I'll do another video on this. Don't reject your experiences. Gather discernment from them about what you like and you don't like, right? All of your experiences weren't, um, instead of living in shame, right? Like I, I really had to forgive myself for all the mistakes that I made because A, I didn't know what red flags to look for. B, I didn't know about narcissism. I mean, I did, my dad was a narcissist, but I didn't know what to look for. No one warned me really. To me, that felt like home and so it felt normal. I didn't, I didn't know any better. Made mistakes. Mistakes are important. That's a part, important part of learning. But if you don't take the lesson from mistakes, then you're just literally like repeating the same cycle and you're actually going to get worse with time. You're not going to heal. You're actually going to devolve instead of evolve. So instead of staying in a place of shame and victimhood around my past and my terrible choices, I had to forgive myself and take those lessons and use them as like wisdom moving forward and hold, have people in my life who hold me accountable to that standard and hold me accountable to, in, to applying those lessons I learned. That's why who you hang out with is really important. Don't hang out with people who co-sign the lies you tell yourself, those people will get you killed. Hang out with the people who hold a microphone to your intuition. That's who's gonna help you with this discernment thing. Cause I honestly, I can't, I couldn't date without community. <laughs> I, I gaslight myself way too much. Be specific with yourself. The more you break down the specific details of what makes you feel bad and why, the more you can choose something else, what makes you feel valued and honored. So then she gives like an example of a really great video. I'll do a whole different video on that. But she, she, she references the, the Gottmans a lot. And I love this because this has actually been my experience, but you can't do this if you haven't done the work on yourself enough. Ah, here we go. So in this video, she talks about how they take um, the perspective that love is a great healer and that good relationships are rooted in mutual kindness, compassion, and care. This and their work in general will teach you what to look for. And I fully agree with the wrong men, I did not heal. I actually reinforced childhood trauma. Is childhood trauma act three, four, five, six. And on, at some level, the more you keep reinforcing it, the harder it is to get out of it. But with the right relationship, after you've done all this discernment stuff and it really, you know, found someone safe, it has been the biggest, one of the biggest forms of healing that I've ever experienced in my life. I, I should talk about that more because y'all like, you only know this version of me. You don't know who I was uh, five years ago, 10 years ago, 20 years ago. Woo! I like this one right here. When I figured out that an ex thought his very real problems would be solved if he became a husband and a father, because then he'd be seen by others as successful, I knew he had to go. Because being okay with yourself is an inside job. And when this doesn't, and when this doesn't fix you, right? Making it as a husband and a father, because it can't. 
you'll blame me. And that right there is why so many men hate their wives. They hate the crutch. They hate the fact that just being successful as a husband and a father in terms of titles has not fixed the real problem and that we can't fix them. We can try. We can give them all kinds of tools. We can I just suggest maybe you should try this. Ah. If they do it at all, which they usually don't. They're usually too lazy. And by that, I mean entitled and not wanting to let go of power. And then who do they hate? Their unwillingness to change? You. So her response, uh, beautifully sped, especially that last part, the relationship is a way to help them avoid doing the work to be okay with themselves. And if it doesn't work, they do blame you. And this person's like, yep, and potentially leave you as a single parent, not by choice, which would be devastating to my career trajectory. Because this is what's, it's what's really happening. The, these men will get into relationships because they need someone to save them from themselves. It doesn't work. They resent that you remind them that they need saving. But by then, they've already uh, had kids with you. You're, you know, you're fully committed to these men. And then they're just like, I'm just not happy. Maybe my secretary will make me happy or whatever. And they start cheating. And then some of them will literally abandon their whole family and start a whole new family with the next woman who will surely fix him because your stupid butt couldn't. But guess what? She can't fix him either. They just jump and jump and jump and hop. And they basically, they will literally, like, I remember I told you all the time, like, because men hate themselves, not all of them, but patriarchy really does a number on them to make them hate themselves the same way it makes us hate ourselves. But unlike us, they won't actually do anything about it. Some women won't either, but so many men are resistant to literally doing anything to fix this because it's gay to go to therapy. You know, their own homophobia which is also rooted in misogyny, keeps them from actually saving themselves. So then they hide in escapism through alcohol, through addictions, through uh, climbing Everest. Yeah, how many men climb Everest when they have literally a baby on the way? Like, I just, I need to. I gotta run a marathon. I gotta run up this high. I don't know why. I just have to. Don't make me not do it. And then they punish you if you're like, that's ridiculous. Why are you doing this? It's not fair, right? So this is why you should not hook up with these men. Because this is what happens. It, this doesn't go away. Their insecurity does not go away. If they are not willing to do the work and they hate themselves, they're going to pull you down with them and they're going to stick you as a single parent. And then that, plus just being married to them and probably having to do way more labor because they're also, again, entitled, which means they're lazy. Your career trajectory has been completely uh, derailed. Now you don't even have the only thing he brought to the table, which was his finances. And so now you're screwed. Why? Because he hated the crutch. And he hated the reminder of the fact that he needed the crutch at all. And then I'm going to wrap this up here. Uh, this, this response right here. If you're a woman and you want a real relationship in the first 100% certain sign that a guy is about to be a mediocre to terrible boyfriend or husband is if he just jumped out of the last relationship. That man has, a mis has mistaken you for an ambulance i love that oh sorry oh my god <laughs> perfectly put and there are men who will keep using one woman after another as an ambulance without stopping to learn any lessons and this right here is what we talk about all the time we are collateral damage we are like their rehab we are the people that they go to to keep trying to better themselves and maybe they take some lessons maybe they grow a little bit but it's so slow. It's not even worth it. Whoever the woman is on the very end of this chain of bodies that he stepped all over to get to that place, it's not even worth it for her. He still sucks. Maybe better to her than all the ones before, but he's still doing the main thing here, which is using women as an ambulance, using women as escapism, using women as a means to an end, the way someone uses a vacuum cleaner to clean their house. They literally use, 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 use instead of just sitting with themselves and being like, who am I? Why do I feel this way? Maybe I should talk about it, right? They're like, no, I gotta play video games. I gotta watch TV. Come on. And this right here, I've seen quite <laughs> a uh, quote, I think is what they're saying. All men's problems come from being unable to sit quietly by themselves alone in a room. Can you not watch TV? Can you not be on your phone? Can you not play games? Can you just sit there 
And this goes for women too, because a lot of women end up in these relationships for the very same reason. But unlike men, we lose and die from this. If a man cannot sit with himself and is always, always going to go, uh, uh, that is that addiction mentality. And y'all know what I say about addict. Do not date an addict. You will be the codependent enabler that goes straight to hell and suffers all the consequences uh, instead of him, other than like him dying. And one guy chimed in here, and I'm going to leave with this last one. Today, my therapist pointed out something interesting. She's been practicing for decades, but she's noticed a shift over time from seeing primarily women who were unhappy in their marriages and relationships with men to seeing primarily men who are single and lonely. That right there. Men's loneliness crisis is a good thing. Some of them will literally not go to therapy until they have no other choice. And a lot of women's problems, the <laughs> it's so telling that a lot of women we're only needing to be in therapy because of men. I'm not saying that we don't have our own stuff. We absolutely do. But a lot of women were in th are in therapy because they just keep getting treated so bad. And they're, they're having to compromise their morals. They're having to compromise. They lose themselves in these relationships. So they're going to the therapist. And believe me, I went to therapy for such a long time without ever being in relationships with men. But I was still dealing with the trauma of men who had essayed me as a child. So even if you're not dating, don't think that you have some of this to deal with. But so many women are like, actually would be fine if they would date themselves. They don't need all this therapy. All this therapy is literally to a way to try to figure out like, how is it this man says, I love you. He committed to me. He has the ring. We, we're doing all this stuff, but like, I hate myself. I've lost myself. And they're going to therapy to try to do the mental gymnastics to, to make this make sense. And it doesn't. And then they don't really need to go as much once they just free themselves of the parasite, of the vampire, the king baby who sucks everything out and has iron, rules with an iron baby fist that could also unalive you in a second. And then they don't need all this therapy. It's the men. I, I remember one of my mutuals said a, a while ago, most of us are going to therapy because of the people who refuse to go to therapy. And if that isn't the truth, I don't know what is. Obviously, therapy makes some men worse because they're literally going there for the wrong reason and they learn therapy speak, blah, blah, blah. I've talked about that. But I, when I say therapy, I mean, do, I don't mean an, it, you have to go to necessarily a therapist, but doing that hard work, going inward, spending time with yourself, and really, instead of being radicalized online, so that your ego feels better or escapism through games and all kinds of like vices or just, you know, forking women. That's another video game they play in real time. Just sitting with themselves and looking inward and dealing with that. That could literally, like that could solve so many problems, but are men gonna do it? I don't know, not my problem. But what I'm not gonna do is enable these men so that they can continue to avoid doing the work and the more of us who tap out of uh, enabling these men to avoid themselves and the more of us who stop getting in relationships with men to avoid ourselves the more the sooner we're going to get out of this hellhole and i promise you it's not going to take that many women to tap out to create a serious change hold the line keep going keep going it takes time it takes patience we're not supposed to fix them we were never meant to fix them Date yourself, focus on yourself, pour into yourself the way you want so badly to pour into a man, that alone will change your life. Do you like this? Let me know if you like this, comments, share, send to your friends, hit notifications, follow all those things, they help me so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you.